Welcome to another edition of Inside Medicine. I am your host, Doug Geinzer, and we are here in the studio today with the good doctors from Complete Care OBGYN, a brand new practice right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And for those of you that are new to Inside Medicine, we broadcast right here in the studio on Thursdays at 10 o'clock. And you can catch us on VegasVideoNetwork.com slash live, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, we push it out through our newsletter, so you will see this video in many, many places. In the During the show, we bring in movers and shakers in healthcare, those that are doing good things, those that are doing great research, bringing travelers in from out of market to visit wonderful Las Vegas, and those that are opening up brand new practices like the folks here today. Uh, Dr. Tanita and Dr. Shung, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having us. It's great to have you. So the practice is pretty new, wet behind the ears, huh? Tell us a little bit about uh, the new practice and when it opened up. Well, we just we just opened up in October, October 9th. We opened mm-hmm. our doors, and uh, we are uh, seeing patients as we speak. Dr. Skinner is actually in the office uh, seeing patients. Somebody has so. to work today. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we have the day the day off. So. Sure. So Dr. Shung and I, uh, yeah, we're, we're seeing patients. We have a... a openings available right now very good where is the practice located you guys got new space it's out in henderson yep uh whereabouts in henderson it's on uh stephanie and uh warren spring the oh. address is uh 1520 west warren springs road very good so very convenient place yes yeah right by the gallery mall that's great what made yeah. you select that area like what was appealing around about that space well, D- Dr. Skinner and I worked in the area. Dr. Um, Shung was actually in the Henderson or uh, Summerland area. Okay. So um, Henderson, you know, my myself and Dr. Skinner, we live in Henderson. We love mm-hmm. that area, the Green Valley Ranch area. I know that uh, you know that area is just blowing up. There's huge um, growth in that area, yep. and uh, you know we can the obstetrics parts were kind of staying close to the hospitals. You know, mm-hmm. Henderson Hospital just opened up and we're yep. going to be delivering there and then as well as we currently deliver at St. Rose Siena. Okay. Um, and we wanted to be a place, that, a place that was kind of close, easy access uh, from the freeway and uh, there's just a lot of traffic in that area. and, and we're Fantastic. So you drew the short straw. You have to drive from Summerlin? I did. I uh, <laughs> The place I practice, I mostly deliver at someone's hospital okay. um, uh, in, a pre- in my previous job. Uh-huh. And um, Dr. Tania and I were very close friends, and we did training together at Bayfront Medical Center. And uh, he actually got me this job at Las Vegas on my previous job. Oh, very good. And um, so, and a few months ago, um, we just decided to open up a new practice together. Well, congratulations on Thank the new you. practice. That's a big move, and it's Thank great you. to hear you. Uh, that you broke away from a larger group. You're starting to deliver a different level of care, and we're going to dive into that a little bit later. Right. In the meantime, I want to learn a little bit more about each one of you personally. So, uh, Dr. Shung, we'll start with you. Tell All us right. where you went. Where'd you go to med school? So, I was born and raised in uh, in Taiwan, and okay. I speak both Mandarin and Taiwanese. Does that come in handy in Las Vegas? It comes in pretty handy. There's a, there's a good majority, uh, there's a good population um, of uh, that speaks uh, Mandarin, which is Chinese. Yeah, you bet. And uh, so, I went to medical school at Louisiana State University. Go and, LSU. And LSU. <laughs> yes. Go Tigers. And uh, we did residency together at um, Bayfront Medical Center. Where's Bayfront? Is that the, the one up? It's in St. Petersburg, Florida. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Beautiful so, area. So we, yeah. we were in training together for four years, and mm-hmm. I moved to um, South Dakota after residency. Burr. Uh, I have to do uh, repay back some uh, student loans. Yep. And uh, I actually enjoy the uh, experience up in, uh, in the MetWest. Um, so after a few years ago, Dr. Tanita said, come down here for uh, continuous medical education. And uh, we happened to have this opening in, in, the, uh, in my previous job. Yep. So I came down here. And um, so Dr. Tanita essentially got me down here to join him with a previous job. Uh-huh. And uh, a few months ago, he uh, opened up this conversation with me to see if I, we want to go out and practice together. How do you like Las Vegas so far? Oh, I love it. The, um, <laughs> I really, so I, I was born and raised in Taiwan. The food is very important to me. Of course. And uh, with this Chinatown and the Korean town here, the food is tremendous. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Tanita, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I was um, raised in San Diego, California. Okay. And so I've come to Vegas when I was younger. And um, I, um, yeah, like Dr. Shung was saying, uh, well, I went to medical school at University, um, American University of the Caribbean, which uh-huh. is St. Martin. Um, I did undergrad at Santa Barbara, UCSB. And then uh, we did. Me- uh, we were in residency together at Bayfront Medical S- Center in uh, St. Pete. And then um, 
yeah, like Dr. Shung said, I came out to Las Vegas. I had uh, you know started practice out here um, with another group, and then we decided to go out on our own. And um, I'm married. I have three kids, um, two dogs, parakeets. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fulfilling life. So St. Martin, there, not yes. much of that island is left after this oh. last round of hurricanes. Yes, they they were actually pretty devastated. We have some friends that live there. Yeah. Uh, there was a roof that blew off of our friend's house. It was pretty devastating. Uh, we've seen videos. I'm sure a lot of people have seen videos on YouTube. Um, yeah, they just built this brand new um, airport a lot of people know the airport because, you know, the big uh, 747s come landing. Takes right off over yeah, the... Takes off, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. It lands. People stay on the, on the you know, on the fence and then it blows sand in their face. That was pretty intense. But, um, yeah, the, the hurricane, it was pretty devastating to them. Yeah, That's wow. Unfortunate. So, Dr. Skinner, who's not with us today, somebody's yep. got to be back at the shop manning the shop. That's right. How did you all come to meet Dr. Skinner? What can you tell us a little bit about him? Well, we worked, uh, actually, both of us worked with him uh, at our previous job. Um, uh-huh. Great guy uh, from Vegas. He's a, he's a local. Okay. Um, right on. Married. He has two kids. Vegas um, strong, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, great guy. And, uh, you know, one of the most beloved uh, doctors I've seen in Las Vegas. People love him. Uh, his patients love him. Very caring, very humble guy, easygoing. Yeah. So the other uh, two doctors, Dr. Skinner and Dr. Tina, usually work on one side of town. I work on the other side of town, uh-huh. but it's still under the same company. Um, I don't see Dr. Skinner that often, but I have a lot of patients of Dr. Skinner, uh-huh. and um, that would eventually come to my um, the Summerlin side of town. And he is uh, he has very high patient satisfaction review. <laughs> All the patients I met up with him absolutely love Dr. Skinner. And that's important nowadays. Yes. Oh, patient definitely, satisfaction definitely. is like one of the biggest scoring exactly. mechanisms. Exactly. Yeah. So let's dive in a little bit I, just for the layman that are out there. The difference between OB, GYN, and you know how the practice has different components and how those integrate together. Sure. Okay. Take us, through, you know, again. Those of us that live and breathe healthcare every single day get it. Those that may service the industry may have a little bit of an understanding, but can you help us sure. better understand that? Sure. So uh, obstetrics is um, mostly deal with uh, issue of with a pregnant patient, mm-hmm. and gynecology is uh, an uh, area of medicine that deal with female issues in general. So um, in our practice, we deal both obstetrics and gynecology. Okay. So uh, in the uh, obstetrical field. Uh, we see patients of um, we see patients in uh, who are pregnant and um, uh, in essentially all branch of um, sorry. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> in, yeah, Doctor Sunil, would you? Yeah, I mean the obstetrics part is delivering babies essentially, and the gynecological mm-hmm. part. Um, you know, there's a whole list of issues with gynecology. I mean, you have. Um, um, anywhere from dealing with birth control, abnormal uterine bleeding, cramping, mm-hmm. uh, later on, uh, menopause, um, and we yeah. – all kinds of topics. And all three of you are board certified. Yes. That's correct. That's, that's correct. That's good. And so your practice, it's new. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, what are you going to do to set yourselves apart from the others? We've got a uh, couple groups in town that have rolled up a lot of the doctors into these large, massive practices. Mm-hmm. You're now a team of three. Right. Uh, what – you know, how do you – scale up your level of care what is it that you're going to do to really set yourselves apart from the other uh the other competition out there yeah i think you know really our our, our model our mission statement is to provide excellent health care to women mm-hmm. and i think um you know i think everybody I, i'm a patient you know we're all patients and we've seen doctors um and i think that uh you know some of the problems that we all face and going to the doctor's are common to all of us, um, whether it's an OBGYN or pediatrics or family practice for that matter, you know, long waiting times, not able to get in to see your doctor. You know, I mean, it's not uncommon to hear people trying to make an appointment. They can't get in for four or five months. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's insane. Um, and um, really what we're trying to provide is an incredible experience. So women come in, they're seen right away. We have openings today that are available people can make an appointment and get in today and to be yep. seen um we don't want to be so busy as to have no appointments available for months at a time um you know we've kind of looked at each other and said that this is just not providing good health care 
Yep. Um, why are we seeing new patients if we can't take care of the patients that we have? And that so, shows in your patient satisfaction scores, too, because absolutely. the patients want that one-on-one -on -one experience. And, and it's good health care. So mm -hmm. if, if someone's having, if a woman, so like Dr. Shung is an excellent surgeon, minimally invasive surgeon. Uh, if a woman has bleeding issues, fibroids, and she needs to get worked up, she's got an issue, doesn't know what's going on, uh, comes in has bleeding issues and, and goes, where what's the problem and how do I fix it? We'll make an appointment with Dr. Shung. He'll um, order labs, maybe do an ultrasound. Does she have fibroids? Does she have any issues? Rule out different things. Uh, if, let's just say, for example, she has fibroids and she's done having babies and decides, okay, you know what? Um, maybe a surgical approach is the way, you know, there's a lot of non-surgical approaches that we go over everything. But if surgery's... Um, what she wants and, and it's the path going forward. Um, certainly you, you need time to come in, do an initial workup to do mm -hmm. testing, go over those results, set up surgery, um, and, and eventually do the surgery and post-op care. Yep. So all that takes time and it takes multiple visits. If you're spacing that out three or four months out, you can't get an appointment for four months. Yeah. That's a problem. I mean, that it can expand a whole year. And in the meantime, it could be bleeding, having issues and problems. Yeah. One of the things when I take care of patients is that my, my scope of practice has changed quite a bit since I uh, was a medical student and, and, and resident. Now that I'm finished residency and, and doing practice on my own, um, I really want the patient to receive the best care. And at the end of my conversation, I will always tell patients, my recommendation for you is the same recommendation I will make for my family, for my sister, for my mom. And I think that's, that's very important. Um, one of my strengths is explanation. Um, I, I like to teach and I like to uh, make sure the patient explains, gets proper explanation. One of the worst things I don't want to see, and this happened to a lot of the patient, is that they come in here and they're on a spectrum of medication. Yeah. And I asked them, so what is the reason you're taking this? Why is doctor prescribing that? They don't know. All they say is, I'm on this because but my doctor says I need it. So I, at the end of my appointment, I, I want to make sure the patient is properly educated and understands exactly what's going on. Um, I'm a pretty big on number person. So I like, mm -hmm. I like to go down the road. Number one, you're here because of this reason. Number two, this is what we're going to do for you, okay? And uh, of what we're going to do, subcategory A, we're doing this. We're going to prescribe medication. Subcategory B, we're going to go into some imaging study. Subcategory C, um, we're going to see you in two weeks to, how, to see how you respond to all this all this. Um, um, treatments that, that yeah. were going. Patient communications is absolutely critical. You we can tell Dr. Shung is very thorough. It, <laughs> he, absolutely. Yeah. He, crosses, he crosses every T and dots every I. Yeah. So are you the only surgeon in the group? No, we are all, we all, we're, yeah, we we're all, all just... gynecological surgeons. Okay. And uh, I did training with Dr. Tanita. Mm -hmm. We had a great uh, experience in, in, um, in uh, training together. And mm -hmm. he is a, also a very strong gynecological and obstetrical surgeon as well. Very nice. And y'all yeah. deliver babies? Yes. Yep. Which hospitals? Absolutely. Sounds like you've, you do quite a bit out in Henderson, and you do some in Summerlin area. Which hospitals do you right. deliver? So um, we're, we're going to be, we actually, we're just credentialed at Henderson Hospitals, the okay. new hospital over um, in Henderson, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then we are also going to be delivering at St. Rose Siena. Okay, very which good. Which is off of St. Rose and Eastern. Yeah, very Two good. Very Both good hospitals. great hospitals. Yeah, yep, no, yes, it's uh, absolutely. It's been uh, fun watching the Henderson Hospital enter the marketplace out there. Boy, has that changed Henderson. And they have great staff. The nurses yeah. there are amazing. They're awesome. Um I don't think they get enough credit, so that's a shout out to all the nurses out there. So, yep. So, tell me the typical patient that comes in to see you. What are they looking for? What is it that they? Uh, what type of treatments are they ask, so asking for? One of the most common one um, that a uh, female needs on on a yearly basis is mm -hmm. the annual real woman examination, mm -hmm. and Pap smear is uh, is a major important part of that annual exam. Um, so why do we do a pap smear? That's one of the, the most important questions to ask. Um, pap smear is utilized to screen for cervical cancer. Before the onset mm -hmm. of cervical cancer, um, I'm sorry, before the onset of pap smear, um, that is one of the le uh, major leading um, uh, cancer as well as a, a form of death uh, for the, uh, on patient mm -hmm. uh, disease list. 
Uh, so when a patient comes in to me for pap smear, I f- make sure I fully understand why we're doing it. Cervical cancer is one of those diseases that does not grow overnight. It takes a long time to, uh, to develop. And um, so when we do a pap smear, we screen for cervical cancer. Pap smear result comes back uh, in different form of uh, stages. On one hand, you have normal pap smear. On the other hand of spectrum, you have cancer. And the goal of a pap smear is to make sure that we catch it before it progresses to the event phase. And there are there's certain, once we perform pap smear and it comes back in different stages, we'll inform the patient what we need to do. Do we need to bring her back for a re-examination? Do we need to bring her back for another repeat pap smear? Or do we need to uh, use any kind of surgical um, intervention? in uh, treatment of this uh, abnormal pap smear. So the technology on that is really changing in in how we detect abnormal pap smears. Um, It used to be just uh, we would grab cells from the cervix, you know, put it under slide, take a look at it under cytology, and and basically evaluate if there are abnormal cells. But nowadays with technology and DNA study, we're able to look at different pathogens that can cause abnormal pap smears, the HPV virus mm-hmm. specifically. And so now with the uh, invention of new technologies and detecting uh, tests that detect, we, um, you know, in the past, you know, a woman would just say, hey, I need my annual pap smear every year. And it was kind of synonymous. I'd get a pap smear once a year. Um, but because we're so good, the understanding of um, the pap smear uh, or the pathology of abnormal cells, they've now spaced out pap smears where you only need them every three to five years. Now, that may be a little scary to some people mm-hmm. and going, well, you know, am I not being covered? Am I not being screened properly? But really, in, in order to have an abnormal pap smear and eventually, God forbid, cervical cancer, you know, a requirement is the human papillomavirus. First, you get that human papillomavirus, and then it can progress to cancer. If you don't have the human papillomavirus, very unlikely it's going to progress to anything serious. And so if you screen for the human papillomavirus, then you can space it out. And we're looking at that specifically. So, you know, the guidelines have changed. ACOG, which stands for the American Congress of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, have done tons of research over many, many years. They're constantly renewing guidelines. And that's one of the areas where the guidelines are changing. So a lot of women will come in, hey, I thought I'm supposed to have a, um, a pap smear every year. And, um, you know, to help explain to them, hey, it, it's not necessarily every year because the technology is so good. Yeah. What I usually explain to patients is that when patient comes in, and I will re- make my recommendation based on ACOG. The recommendation is that le- a patient less than 30 years old gets a uh, screening pap smear every three years, and beyond uh, age of 30, it's every five years. Now, that makes a little difference whether you're HPV positive or negative. Uh, depending on, on those screening criteria, I will communicate this to patient. I will also tell patient that I understand that even though the recommendation says this, if patient is not comfortable with recommendation. I do not have an issue in performing a pap smear on a, a yearly basis or a biannual basis. And they're fully covered by insurance. Yeah, That is correct. Okay, that is that's correct. what I insurance thought. Yeah. So I, I also make the point that as long as your insurance cover for it. And to my experience, majority of insurance will cover this. So this is one of those, it's a simple test that will help save dollars in the future. As we all know, healthcare expenses have been on a little bit of a runaway, Mm -hmm. and this will help control that because it helps catch the, uh, any issues before they become more severe. Sure. I mean, Uh, you can get bogged down in a lot of the details and the technology of it, but you know, in essence, you're really, uh, you're trying to prevent cervical cancer Mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a screening test for that. Yep. Do you have mid-level practitioners in the practice? Or is it just the three docs? And... It's just the three docs right okay. now. We don't have any nurse practitioners or yep. PAs. Maybe eventually. Yeah. yeah. What are your what, take a look at your practice? What does it look like in a couple of years? You know, what are your hopes and dreams, and where do you plan on <laughs> going with this? And if you don't care to share, then say that. Yeah. You know, I mean, I I think there's a huge need, especially in the Henderson area. I mean. Um, it's pretty amazing on how difficult it is to get in to see an OBGYN, to make an appointment. Um, I mean, it's almost unheard of to go, you know, I need an appointment. Can I get in this week? Mm -hmm. Um, Much less, you know, within days. Um, So I think that um, there there certainly is a huge need for OBGYN specifically in Las Vegas, um, but just doctors in general. So talk to me. I I heard both of you mention ACOG. 
right? Yes. Uh, and I believe you all are fellowshipped over there? or Yep. So ACOG is a society among uh, obstetricians and gynecologists. Mm-hmm. You have ABOG, which is kind of the board. Okay. Uh, a lot of the members that are on the, uh, the board of ACOG are on the board of the American uh, Board of Obstet- Obstetricians and Gynecologists. Um, the board kind of certifies you, but ACOG is kind of an ongoing uh, society that helps uh, put out guidelines and, mm-hmm. and does lots of research. Yes. And that's what helps you with your continued education. Oh, Absolutely. It's... Yes. Yep. Very good. Mm-hmm. On a yearly basis, um, um, all the uh, obstetrician and gynecologists needs to take um, needs to re- uh, recertify on the uh, on our board certification status, and uh, ABOG will give us a certain mm-hmm. literature to review, uh, and we take a test and make sure that we keep we are up to date on. Uh, on our current certification. That's great. Excited to hear about the new practice. Congratulations. It's a Thank big you. thing. We've covered a lot of ground today. Is there anything that we did not cover that you want the audience to know? Well, we have a brand new um, building. It's beautiful mm-hmm. inside. My wife designed it. Actually, she did nice. a phenomenal job. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, great interiors. I mean, we have big um, exam rooms and uh, we're just waiting to uh, bring the patients in. I think that... Um, what they'll find is when they come in, it's um, just the interiors are beautiful. But we, uh, what was really important for us is to have staff that was very friendly, excited, wanted to make a difference. And that was really important to us because I know that, um, you know, if you come in and the front desk doesn't, res- you know, respect you or give you time and they're on the phone and they don't want to listen to your problems, you know, that's that's not providing excellent health care. So we were we paid um, very close attention to the people that we hired. We have a phenomenal staff. They're awesome. And I think when people come in, uh, they're going to be blown away by just the office, but really the, the people there. Yep. And um, I went into practice um, with Dr. Tanita and Dr. Skinner. And these two I uh, speak highly of. Uh, these two guys are men of integrity and honestly. And um, I also believe that we all have the similar idea and concept in wanting to provide great care uh, of OBGYN to uh, all females. And um, both Dr. Tanita and Dr. Skinner have the similar concept in treating patients with respect and give the same recommendation to our patients as we would to our own family member. Fantastic. Again, congrats uh, on the opening of Complete Care OBGYN. Folks mm-hmm. want to get in touch with you. What's the best way for our audience to reach out to you? What's the best means? They can go to completecareobgyn.com. Fantastic. That's probably the best way. It's a great way. Uh, Doctors, again, thank you for coming into the studio. You. To our listeners and viewers out there, uh, thank you for joining us for another episode of Inside Medicine. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in future episodes. Please check us out on YouTube, Facebook, Facebook Live, Vegas Video Network, and all of our channels. And until the next one, you have, have a great day. Thanks again. <laughs>